I was going to go on this morning, actually, after oh, that. Yeah, you said, yeah. After that, um, that magazine, mm. then the Daily Mail, and then this, mo- this morning got, um, you know, a hold of the story. Mm. They phoned me up. I just agreed to do the interview. They was going to send a car for me. Mm. But as you can imagine, Alex was like, no, I don't want no more of me out there. <laughs> you know, and yeah. because that was pretty, like, caning for him. Everyone mm. was like, why has she done that? You know what I mean? Why would she go and do that story? Like, mm. because it's, if they read the story, I've not. Uh, there's an end bit of yeah. a little version of a little um, comment that Alex has put. You know, Claire is the very last bit. Claire is a strong woman. So it says there, Alex yeah, says. Claire's, Claire's, Alex said, Claire's a strong woman, and I'm happy and proud of her for doing what makes her happy. I hope she ins- hope that she inspires other single women. Yeah. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Celia Lee Show. Uh, I'm your girl, Celia, and today we've got a guest here, a lovely lady here, who's going to tell me about a story that... Um, that I think inspire, will inspire a lot of women. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you came to me to the gym yeah, and said that you want to, you have a story to tell, you want to be on my podcast. Celia Lee Show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so introduce yourself, your name, where you're from and what you do. Yeah, I'm uh, Claire McGlynn and uh, I am now 45. And I am uh, now, I'm a teacher in a senior school, but, you know, I've always been in the beauty industry. I'm a single mother of twin, beautiful twin girls who turn eight next month, Mm -hmm. Hope and Faith. Yeah, and I love those names. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to talk about why why you call them as well. Yeah. uh, Those names. So, okay, so you came to me at the gym and you was like... This is after I remember when I first like launched like the new the, the when I rebranded my my podcast. She was yeah. like, "What do you, what do you talk about?" And yeah, I was like, seeing your content. Yeah. It's really sort of grabbed me. Yeah. Loved it. <laughs> and you was like, "Oh," and I was like, "What do you want to talk about?" She goes, "Oh, Google me." So mm. I remember because we was at the bottom of the stairs, so yeah. we had to make it clear. I was like, "Okay, okay." So then I googled you, and I remember the first article that came across was the Daily Mail. But Daily Mail basically proper trolled you. They were saying things like. Clearly, being a mother was more important than uh, being with your lover or something like that. Yeah, and I was just like, "Wow!" Like, but then on the on, but realistically, that's not a bad thing, isn't no, it? No, no, it's not. It's about you know, putting yourself first. Yeah, you, what, what makes you happy? But so it that, wasn't about that. Anyway, yeah, it wasn't that, about that was yeah. all bullshit. <laughs> but um, you, this is here's a magazine. We've got a Bella magazine here. But um, that was I? the first one that I done. Yeah, and Daily Mail was the second one because how it works yeah. with the um, press and that they grab hold of one story and then mm. they get another. And and it says here, my fiance was infertile. My fiance was infertile, so I had to leave him. Um, let's talk about that. Right. <laughs> okay. So this this story was kind of what. I want it to be inspirational. This mm. is hopefully I'm going to get yeah. the story straight now, you know. Yeah. Let's start from the love story. How okay. It happened, yeah. Right, yeah. Okay, let's go way back then. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, me and Alex, we was together for, it turned out 15 years by the time we we parted. Um, but we was always, um, well, he was definitely, the, you know, the, uh, the love of my life. Mm. Um, we wanted to have kids. And uh, after about being together about eight years, you know, he was a very alpha male. You know, we had a big house and he was a hard worker and we had the nice cars um, and, and all that stuff. And then uh, we decided we wanted kids. I'm kind of shorting it all down, you know. Mm. We, we decided we kind of uh, wanted kids. And when we did... So we'd travelled the world, we'd, we'd done loads, we'd, we was at a stage now, like, we we're, were, was ready to, yeah. you know, try for kids, and after about three years of... How old were you when you were ready? Uh, I think about 26, okay, something okay. like that. So, um, might be 28 or something like that, but uh, give or take. Um, yeah, so we decided, we weren't, like, trying, trying desperately, I'd just come off the pill, and mm. after a sort of couple of years didn't happen, and then... Um, Obviously, him being an alpha male, and he was Greek and that as well, and every it was kind of the problems, pro- like in their eyes, probably lied with me. Yeah. Anyway, I was the first one to go and have all the tests. You know, I had the dye put inside me to see if my tubes were blocked. I had every kind of test. And Why did you have to do that first? Oh, because to see if your tubes are blocked to see like. But before going back a bit, because you two just when you tried, yeah, because just yeah, it just weren't working. It yeah. just weren't happening. Yeah. So he told you to get tested, or you? Well, just it was watched? just, it was just, you know, I was just the first one to, you know, just go and He didn't say, right, you go and get tested. Yeah. I can't really remember it, actually. Yeah. But you know, it was easy for me to go to the doctors, right. get tested, and yeah. well, actually, thinking about it, it's probably easier for him because he yeah. was just about to have his sperm, <laughs> you know, like. Yeah. Uh, 
But, um, yeah, so I had all the tests yeah. and got told, I remember the conversation, I remember the, the doctors phoning me up, going, no, you're absolutely fine, go go off and have loads of babies. Yeah. And I was like, I feel right. And this is... So um, then, obviously, it was like, well, shit, maybe the problem lies with me, which he went and got his sperm tested. Mm. And I remember sa- them saying that there was no live sperm which was a massive blow mm. obviously um cuz yeah it was just a massive blow and uh obviously in being the way that he was it's like for a man i suppose having your manhood taken away you know what i mean mm. it was it was devastating really at the time um but but time kind of went on and I was like, it doesn't matter, I don't matter, you know, I don't want to have kids because I remember him saying, you you know, you should be a mum, go off and have kids. And mm. But love don't work like that, does it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. you know, we were still quite young at the time and we, mm-hmm. we just carried on living our lives. We, we were very social people, as I say. Yeah. We was, our house was the entertaining house. Yeah. And, you know, um, so we just kind of got our heads around it and probably went on, on holidays and, yeah. you know just lived our lives a bit and just getting our heads around it. And then uh, I remember that our friends, his brother and girlfriend had, had their baby or got pregnant. My sister got pregnant and everyone was a bit worried about telling us because, yeah, you, you know, be, everyone thought yeah. we were the ones that was going to have kids first, mm. you know. But, and as time went on, I decided... Actually, I do want to be a mother. How long after? Uh, uh, I think Theo and CJ, they was sort of one, 15 months, and like that, you know, like where, when they started to walk and yeah. just all like that. But I mean, going back as well, I do remember, and it's important that you say things like this because a show just got aired last week, it saved my sperm, mm. you know, and they're talking about you know, um, things that could sort of make a man infertile. Yeah. You know, it could be taking steroids or it could be sort of having an accident when, yeah. when he was young. And I remember that um, my ex, I remember him at one point very much into the gym, we both was, and I remember seeing that he was taking steroids because mm. I printed out and I remember leaving the print out on the table you know, uh, I mean, there's loads of bits to this story, but I'll... Sp- and what did he say so when you did that, though? We didn't actually talk about it. I just remember... I didn't want to say to him, so that's why I just left the print out, yeah. it was quite a delicate subject, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it, But was that after you finding out that he... That his yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, but he also had an accident when he was younger, like playing rounders or something. A back mm. got... A back got... Um, hit into his yeah. genital areas and it was very badly bruised yeah. and so you never find out the yeah. reasons why we never mm. did i mean going on to when we did um then get second opinions because mm. it was just that one time we got told he, there was no live sperm yeah. and then we just carried on living yeah and then when he you know we was both he, he desperately wanted children he yeah. wanted to you know work hard uh, grow these businesses this empire to to mm. leave to his children and stuff you know so um uh, don't forget, I got told that I was all right back yeah. then. How did you feel? I know you you said to him, don't be silly, you know, love doesn't work like this. But yeah. through those years, how did you feel? I don't know if I thought it was... I don't know if it hit me as much as what it obviously hit him because I thought something... He always had a way of making things happen. Mm. You know, oh, something could work out. Because so, we spoke about adoption. We mm. actually went down that route. We made the phone calls. We had interviews. Mm. Um, sperm donors at the time, his brothers, you know, offered, you know, because you can get it from a family member, yeah. offered to, you know, donate their sperm, but obviously it's a bit too close to home. They're quite yeah. close family. Um, what did he say about all of that? Yeah, he said, no, no, that ain't going to work. I mean, I wasn't really up for that either. Mm. You know, I weren't trying to push him in that direction. Yeah. Um, so then tell me about, because you mentioned something about going to Cyprus. Yeah, well, we got second opinions in this country first yeah. before we then flew to Cyprus because mm. his mum's uh, best doctors in Cyprus come over. I mean, that was a little bit later on mm. down the road, but we we spent thousands going to top um, uh, hospitals in London mm. where, um, you know, we had a second opinion and he had this sperm actually drawn out from his 
yeah. testicles yeah. to see if his tubes were blocked because yeah. that was another hope, you know, that, yeah. that it's not coming through yeah. right his tube. So I remember um, going to this this top London clinic and he went off to have the operation. My mum and his mum was there as well. Um, and I was so nervous. I remember sort of being outside the hospital, phoning up my sister, phoning up this one, that one, and just having hope and faith, you know, that yeah. this this would work, you know, and... Uh, um, hope and faith, that's, the, that's why yeah, the name of the daughters. Yeah, always had hope and never <laughs> yeah. give up faith. He had something to do with their names as well, but I'll go on to that. But, yeah, um, yeah so... And I remember, and it was wrong at the time, that, that the doctor... we, Me, his mum and my mum was waiting in the room for him to come back up for the recovery. Mm. And the doctor come in and uh, took one look at his face and he said, no, sorry, there's, there's just no hope. Which we thought it was wrong for telling us before Alex, you know. Mm. But anyway, um, and we was all devastated, so then just waiting for Alex to then be wheeled into the room coming coming round from his operation and he just t- took one look at my face and his face dropped again and yeah. it was back to square one, back to mm. the heartache, back to yeah. the losing all faith and, yeah. and all that. And So uh, then when did you, like, break up with him? Uh, well, before that, then we go on to sort of, you know, a year or so down the line. Yeah, okay. We went then to um, Cyprus. He flew over to Cyprus. Okay. His mum lived in Cyprus. Mm. So he flew over to Cyprus and had some more tests, some more, some more you know, second opinions and mm. stuff. And then it was a miracle. They'd found sperm. Yeah. And I couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe it. You know, I remember him crying on the phone and, well, you know, just no one could believe it, you know. Mm-mm. Anyway, we've, I then flew over there and we'd done a round of IVF. So I had to do the injections. Mm. We, we changed the diets and lived healthily. And, mm. you know, I had to do the injections and the, they collected my eggs. And, you know, in the day of insemination, you know how it works, mm. IVF, you know. Um, they planted the egg inside me, waited two weeks, went back, it didn't work. Um, yeah, I took this pregnancy test, it didn't happen, so again, back to square one, mm. back to the blow. Um, we come back from Cyprus and went back to our clinic that obviously knew us because we'd been yeah. having all the tests and that there and told them what had happened in Cyprus yeah. and... They, a, they hadn't heard of half the things they'd done in Cyprus, the test and that. And yeah. basically, they'd done more tests on him at the time, see if things had changed. They, they don't kind of change if you're not producing sperm, live sperm, you're not mm-hmm. producing live sperm. So, um, yeah, so then they said, listen, don't, you, nothing's changed, you're not producing, you're never going to father your own children, stop mm-hmm. wasting your money, basically. Um, then it was kind of, I think that that's kind of the breakdown of the like, the relationship, really. Yeah. And talk about when you found out you about yourself, because you, you mentioned you said something about you um, to get the free IVF treatment or something. You yeah. So I mean, eggs. when when that sort of happened, uh, I was still with Alex. I mm. met someone who was my inspiration as well because she was going through it yeah. through a mutual friend, and mm. she was. Um, she was having a sperm donor. Yeah. And she's got a, a little boy and a little girl now, amazingly. She actually got a sperm from America. There's this site you can go on called Zytec. All the and you, Yeah. <laughs> so you pay 300, yeah. 300 euro dollars and you can see all the donors, their mm. faces, their okay. so much information. Yeah. So I, I would sort of leave Alex. He knew what I was doing mm. and he's like... I don't know how I feel about this. Maybe I'll change my mind. And I was mm. like, look, I want to have a sperm donor, you know. Um, but he said he'd support me either way. Um, By now, how old were you? Uh, going on, obviously, sort of, I don't know, it could be 30, 29, 30, maybe. Okay, so I mean, well, I was 30, I think I was 37 when I had the girls. I was yeah. 34 when I got told that I could. So, yeah, maybe yeah. sort of 29, 30. Okay. So, you know, I was kind of doing it on my own, but we mm. were still kind of together, living yeah. in the house and stuff. And, yeah. you know, I'd come back and say to him about these... But every donor I was looking at, I was trying to match up as close to Alex, you know mm. what I mean? So it could... 
so hoping that you know he would sort of be there and yeah. and uh, it would all sort of work out so I was doing it for him as well you know what I mean yeah. I wanted his dreams I didn't want to split up with him you know yeah. I wanted us to have, live happily ever after and have kids and get married and mm. all that you know so I was thinking yeah surely he's just gonna you know so I was looking at donors sperm donors on my own and th- this this friend of mine Keely she would um, I'd go around to, to her house and we'd look through the site together and she would t- talk to me about what she's doing or the donor that she's um, chose and, mm-hmm. and I'd go back to Alex talk about it and it was it sounds kind of weird yeah. but it was so in the end what, did you get a sperm donor no okay no what in the end yeah. we kind of it, we was kind of drifting away I suppose yeah. at that point mm-hmm. he was sort of going he and I just was on tunnel vision. I wanted to be a mum. Yeah, moving forward, moving forward. When we did finally split up, I then went to the same clinic who mm. knew all our details, who had all our details, and uh, went. To d- I heard about the egg sharing scheme. Mm. So if you donate your eggs to other women, yeah. you get your treatment free. Right, OK. And then you just have to pay for your sperm donor and all yeah. that. But Because the cry- clinics are crying out for egg donors. Yeah. You know, there's not enough of them out there and stuff. So that, that was my plan. I was going to go donate my eggs because I got told I was fine. Mm. Um, so I had all the, all the tests. It's a, it's a blood test simply that you have, first of all, and it's called an AMH. And you need to be 15 and above to be able to donate your eggs mm. they come back and said that mine was 0.7 what does that mean um, my eggs were basically uh, quality or quantity was kind of no good it would be a very very slim chance if we use my eggs that and then that was my blow you and know. how old were you then i was 34 and do you think it's to do with my biological age, clock biolo- okay i was showing signs right. of early menopause my mum went through early menopause mm. So, I mean, going back to um, when I was with Alex, I got told I was fine. Mm. Staying with him for eight years on, Mm. my biological clock ticked away, which is a very important message I do want to get out there to women. You know, don't leave it too long. Mm -hmm. Especially nowadays, more and more people are having more problems, uh, you know, um, you know, conceiving, having children and and whatnot. What do you think? I think, like, I think to do with our diets. It's to do with the, you know, the the stuff that's being sprayed upon the food yeah. out there and our diets and yeah, definitely like the, and the lifestyle that we have now. Yeah, people, women are more stressed and things yeah. like that, and it, and it does affect your estrogen. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, hundred percent. Anyway, they they said that you know my eggs were no good. Yeah. So I went away, and that was my blow. Then it was like couldn't believe it and then I was down you know what can I do I think I, I think I went I'd be fair and I, I, I lived a little bit you know mm. before I was ready to then speak about my options you mm. know a um, couple of years later I went right okay what my options so I then spun it spun, spun around on me that I then needed to pay for a lady to have her treatment she donated her eggs to me and I paid for her treatment so mm. Before I knew that I was going to do that, and they they simply bring it up, they simply do it like they find the statistics of you as someone that's your height, your mm. hair colour, your eye colour, match up and yeah. all that. So before I was ready to do it, uh, I went to the, the juicing retreat, retreat yeah. to detox my body. Cause Talk I was, about this juicing retreat. What exactly is that? Literally, you just drink juice. The you whole drink week. juice. Jason Val, I follow him and still do. Mm. You know, he's the juice master and to detox your body so you juice for seven days you go out to Portugal in these beautiful surroundings up on the mountains you know and you can sit sit in a cocoon all day and you can go yoga at six o'clock in the morning you can do meditation at seven you can go and have a swim you can so they've got a big itinerary you know that you can do a full itinerary of the day every two hours you go and have your juice you'll meet up in in this this lovely surroundings and you have your juice these juices are made of you know, all sorts of good things. Obviously, the gingers that you put in there, mm. spirulina, yeah. which is a powder form with lots yeah. of minerals and stuff. Mm. And um, But they also have things like avocado to thicken it up and fill yeah. you up. And So then, you see, like, all these juices, then we could do it at home, then, basically. Yeah. If you have any, any women out there who want to basically detox... Detox, and get, well, can juice do that and valve, the juice mask, they yeah. do f- five-day detox, seven-day yeah. detox, three-day detox, you know, like... You know, go and check him out. He's absolutely amazing, and I do believe that that doing all that helped mm. for, for my body to okay. actually, you know, um, conceive the, yeah. you know, for it to work first time for me, which it did. So yeah, I was doing everything 
tunnel vision, you know, I was meditating, I was doing yoga, mm. I was... Uh, oh, and the, the juice retreat, you know, I was talking about what I was doing. Yeah, I'm going to go home, I'm, I'm going to have this uh, egg donor and a sperm donor. And I met a lady there and she's like, what, what are you doing? Like, I've never heard of this. Mm. You know, and I told her about it, you know, um, and she's like, wow, that's amazing. You know, everyone was like, amazing, you know, oh, that's brilliant. You know, I forget we're in the 21st century, you don't need a man, you just need the sperm. <laughs> You know, and uh, so anyway, so we all left the, the retreat and uh, a few months later that this, I remember particularly this lady, Jane, her name is, um, we're still in contact now. And uh, she contacted me and said, Claire, I, I, you know, I've been trying to find you, trying to get hold of you. Anyway, I found you. I've got a story of my own. I haven't stopped thinking about what you told me about what you're doing mm -hmm. and what clinic you're at because she lived in Birmingham. Right. And my clinic's got massive high success rate so mm -hmm. she travelled all the way down she said I've got a story of my own mm. I've Which had my clinic is it so people know yeah it's the Hearts and Essex clinic and it, I was lucky enough for it to be on my doorstep because mm. that can be sometimes the, a massive stress for people who have to travel up oh, London yeah. to a clinic so Hearts and Essex it's a, it's got something like the, the best success rate in the country mm. Or one of the best anyway so um, she travelled down a long way and had a consultation with them and she started her treatment before me we met up for coffee and mm -hmm. and now she's a she's got twin girls as well but she was like you're so inspirational you know if unless mm -hmm. I met you on that retreat yeah. I never would have thought about it and so it was nice to know that my story d yeah. has at least helped one person yeah. out there was she infertile as well or she just no she didn't have an egg donor she just had a sperm donor how old was she was she an older woman or something? Uh, yeah she was actually she was a few years older than me so okay. her, her time was running out yeah mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's hereditary sort of early menopause and that, mm. so definitely find out if your mum has gone through early menopause because mm. it's it's hereditary. My mum was 34 at the time mm. when she, me and my sister are probably coming out the other end of it now. But yeah. Um, so yeah, she become um, a mother before me. Uh, anyway, I was ready then to go full steam ahead. Now have my treatment with the clinic. So mm. exciting times. Yeah, yeah, very. <laughs> and I had to support the next support network like was like unbelievable my friends my family my mum my dad I'll move back in with my mum and dad mm. um where was Alex this whole time he was still we were still in contact okay. you know so he, he was, knew all of this was gonna he knew it was yeah. all in and he was like yeah go for it I think you should go for it mm. you know um you'll be amazing you you you're, yeah. you you know be a, you was yeah. born to be a mum you know also just to confirm because obviously like I said in the beginning Daily Mail said oh you left Alex because you wanted to be a mo mother but the real reason wasn't that right no the real yeah. reason was that so we, we yeah yeah we just grew apart okay. you know what I mean he mm. just he just I suppose gave up hope and he knew at the back of his head that I wanted to be a mum mm. you know and, and we just it definitely weren't because he was infertile okay. because it was as I say I still stayed with him for eight years yeah. after we found out he couldn't have kids okay. and in the meantime my biological clock ticked yeah. away so if anything <laughs> Yeah. yeah. All right, so going back, so then, uh, okay, so it was your turn. It was my turn. Yeah, and then... Uh, the clinic's, like, waiting for someone to then go to the clinic mm -hmm. and say that they they want to do the egg, egg sharing. So I got yeah. a phone call and said, right, we've got a match for you. Yeah. Are you ready? And I was like, oh, God, yeah, yeah, let's do this. So yeah. she did, the lady who I never get to meet, never met, don't know her, she don't know me, she... I'll pay for her to do her treatment. She's the one that now has to do the, uh, all the IVF round, yeah. do the injections and everything with her. So basically, you pay her for IVF and she donates her egg to you. Yeah, that's that's um, that's what I get out of it. Okay. I pay for her. So she, so some women out there think I couldn't do that because there'll be my, my kids yeah. running around. You know, yeah. it's a lot for a woman to get their head around. Mm. To donate your egg, you're helping another family True. you're helping another yeah. si a single woman mm -hmm. you know and it is just an egg it's not the f it's not an embryo yet it's just mm. an egg you know so women ladies out there if you if you uh want to go donate your eggs but the important thing is they don't want you in over 35 mm. you know your eggs are kind of yeah sort of run so you need to be sort of um younger or even go yeah. freeze your eggs or, or go and have that amh definitely mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, so then okay, so then you got the treatment. Yeah. How, describe the treatment. How would the, how did the process? How does the process work? I just had to. So she's doing all the um, injections and all mm. that. I had to have a suppository 
just to thicken my womb. Right. Just to, um, and that was kind of every couple of days or something. I can't really remember. I mean, it wasn't really much that I had to do. Mm. It just to sort of look after this area. Yeah. And how did you do you that? Know, it's properly. just literally insert a, a chalky suppository okay. inside to to thicken. Yeah. How long you know. did you have to do that for? Say like seven days. Okay. This was kind of towards the end of. I mean, it's it's a six week process for her to mm-hmm. do all of her injections. Mm. So it was kind of doing nothing for me really in mm. the in the beginning um, until towards the end. Okay, you have to. It was probably some tablets that I had to take as well. To um, I'm not too sure to be honest mm. what what I had to do. Yes. Like I so mean, it was a long time ago. <laughs> the girls are right next. So after the seventh yeah, day. Fun. The day, seven days, and then what happened? Then you go to the... Then so we go for the egg. She, so they collect her eggs. Yeah. And then there's extra things that you can have. And then what about a sperm donor? So then. Oh, yeah, the sperm donor. Yeah. Going back to the sperm donor, I knew that I wanted a Greek donor. Yeah. Um, they had a brand new donor. Yeah. Um, it was English Greek. Yeah. They had a brand new donor that's never donated before, and he was doing that in the January. Mm. And he was like... She said, we have, because, you know, on their list, they haven't got a Greek donor, but we've got one that's donating in January. I was like, right, okay, I want it, want it, want it, want it. It's weird how the universe works. Yeah, (laughs) yeah, I'm such a big believer. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so he was my donor. He was all ready. Mm. He donated. That that was all all done, ready to go. And then, um, yeah, so as for the the lady, she's... Mm -hmm. So I had to do all these, all these um, procedure, procedure, prepare, prepare yeah, your, procedure. Uterus, Sorry, yeah. my mind keeps yes, going. Okay. <laughs> In my mind, I keep thinking back, yeah. and you know, because it's it's amazing time, but it's been so yeah. long since I've actually spoke about yeah. the story. I mean, everyone knows that where the girls have come <laughs> from, but actually going back on the whole experience mm. is. Um, so do yeah. they do it inside of you or do they do it in a yeah, lab? No, so, yeah, they, obviously they do it in a lab. So yeah. there's extra things that you can get on top. So yeah. they, it's called the Propel Scrape. Mm. So I had the Propel Scrape. Basically, it was it was quite a painful procedure, but they scraped the lining of my womb mm. to make embedments right. for the eggs to attach to. Mm-hmm. I had the embryo glue, which they dip the embryos into the glue, another sort of way to mm. help it work. Mm. Um so I had all that. That was all kind of extra. Mm-hmm. But she had, she donated ten eggs for me. And then they said, what they do is they're in a little dish. You know, mm-hmm. they had the eggs and the sperm donor. Yeah. They put it under the light, and yeah. that every day she was phoning me because they take it to the blastocyst stage, which is like five days of of making them sort of attached together, and all that. They're telling so, you what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, so um, every, every day, right? We we lost a couple of eggs last night. Mm. You know, because it could be like there's no no yeah. good embryos at the end. So, the, so there's no guarantee time, that yeah. they, these two are going to take mm. and attach and be strong enough for you to then for yeah. them to have inside you. So, like, because you said she donated ten eggs, so that means it's not always ten eggs. Some something it depends what how much. Yeah, you could have six eggs. No, she was okay. she'd done well. She'd see, yeah. Mm. Some people in the that going through IVF, they might even have two eggs that the clinics collected. They might even have one. Let's not forget only does take one mm. but I was lucky she, I remember she had 10 eggs wow. so yeah. we ended up after the blastocyst stage yeah six had gone now you know we've got three left and there was two mm. on the day of the um, the insemination or the day before the insemination right we've mm. got two coming in tomorrow you know and they didn't even my mum, my dad and that didn't want me to have both put in. Are you sure? What if you end up with twins? Mm. You know, and... All right, so you can put both in, but doesn't necessarily guarantee that Yeah, they will both work. No, okay. yeah. Mm. No, they get, obviously one could work, mm. one both could not work. So if there was three that work, you put three, you could have triplets potentially? Yeah, too. potentially, oh, yeah. Okay. But because of my right. age, so even the clinic was trying to talk me out of having two and yeah. I had to sign something as well to say, like, um, it's my decision, I yeah. 100% want two yeah. um, and all that. So. Why did you want two in you? I had in my head that yeah. I was going to have twins. Okay, right. I was. Yeah, I had in my head that I was going to have a light one, a dark one. My, yeah. I manifested it, and you it absolutely worked. Absolutely have because I've met your I, daughters. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Yeah. I just knew, you know, and my, I've, my attitude towards yeah. it all, and you know, I mean, yeah, I got my times that I was nervous and that, mm. but I was. This was you, working. It's, it's the power of believing, yeah. power of knowing. This is why I always say to people, like, what you think 
it, your thoughts become your reality. It's yeah. so powerful. Like, yeah. you, I think a lot of people don't say, people think, oh, it's a spirituality thing. Okay, it is spirituality, but it also it's actually science. Yeah. What you think, the, the messages that the brain cells, all these messages, carry, they carry messages and they're actually... They yeah. are in your cells, yeah. and and you emit that energy, and yeah. it becomes the reality. Like you said on one yeah. of your, your clips yesterday, yeah. if you can see your dream yeah. and you can feel it, yeah. and you see it, you keep seeing it, yeah. and it will happen. Yeah. You can make it happen. Exactly. Anything the, you want in this life, in this world, you know, you see it and grab it with both hands, yeah. and just make sure you just go out there and get it. Yeah, like um, it's, it's kind of going off topic. We come back to what you're yeah, talking yeah. about. I wanted to quickly share this, basically. Um, so I did, um, some, for those who followed me know about this, I did plant medicine. I, I did this. I did this plant called um, peyote, and it's a cactus plant where yeah. the Native Americans do it. Anyway, so I did it in a ceremonial way with a, a, a group of people. Yeah. And obviously, you, and then you get all the less, uh, psychedelic, so you, tr- you start tripping. And I remember one part, this, this, uh, the reason I'm telling you is about the manifestation, the vision. Yeah. The vision. Anyway, yeah. so... While I was tripping, yeah, and I was closing my eyes, there's this. I saw this vision really clear. It, um, it was just like basically I was in the room in a like a Victorian looking room, mm. and it was so clear. Um, but bear in mind, I was closing my eyes. Okay? Yeah. So yeah. I saw these like nice flowery pottery, like these potteries, like looking at plates and stuff like that. Yeah. They were so clear. And the reason I'm telling you this is because the message behind it, like yeah. it's not like there's a voice. I just knew you just know yeah, the, yeah. what the message meant is that if you can see something really clear, it's there. It's gonna be there. Yeah. It's gonna happen. Mm-hmm. So that was the message. It was reminding me as long as you see your vision clearly, yeah, and you believe it, yeah, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. Yeah. So yeah, yeah that's the wrong one to say. Yeah, no, that's uh, <laughs> yeah. I've heard about all that. Um, yeah. So all that going back. So, yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Back, I might so have to try that one day because <laughs> I just yeah. So yeah, so you planted two two eggs. Yeah, two you. eggs. Had to yeah. sign the form and everything. Um, I had to sign the form to say this is your choice. You mm-hmm. know, we've advised you just to do one and mm. and all that. So yeah, my vision was there. No, I know that. It was, it's, so then you go away and you have to go back seven days later to have the blood test or whatever to see if you're pregnant, see mm. if it's worked. After a couple of days, I was getting these pains in my stomach, like, and and I just thought they're attaching. They're, I just know they're attaching to my like to my body and I was saying to my mum oh I've got these really bad pains just like period pains okay. like it was like oh you know and uh, my mum's going oh god don't get your hopes up please you know she's more nervous for me than what yeah. I even was you know I was like it's alright mum fine I'm fine I'm not getting my hopes up you know but you know but it's working I just know um, anyway I got to about day five and I remember my friend Carly being with me and she's very like let's go get pregnancy test my mum was, my dad was in bed. My mum was next door with a neighbour. She's going, come on, let's just go and get it. I was like, oh, no, I'm nervous. Like, oh, my God. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. I weren't like, yeah, let's go and get it. and all Because, yeah. you know, <laughs> still, yeah. you know, you just... So, she, so we went down to Tesco's. We got this pregnancy test. Come home. I've done it. And they say you should do it first thing in the morning, but this mm. is like 7 o'clock at night. Mm. Went up, done it. Straight away, these blue lines come up. Straight away. Mm. And I was like, oh, I can't believe it. Oh, my God. And she was like, see, oh, my God, you got twins. you got twins. I tell you, they're both tight. Look how, look, look, Claire, look how, look how dark them lines are. Definitely. I was like, oh, my God. They so ran next door, told my mum. And she was like, oh, my God. Like, what do you mean you've done a test? We were supposed to go to the clinic <laughs> next week. Well, in a couple of days. Why have you done a test? Oh, my God. Like, she's so nervous. Run up, woke my dad up. And he's, like, all confused. Like, dad, dad, look, I'm pregnant. And all that, um... Anyway, obviously, I'd done sort of... So two lines... How did you know... Pregnant, two lines on a pregnancy. But how did she know it was a twin? Did you just think... Just because the line come up so prominent, I don't know, like, because obviously I've got two embryos inside me. So it's like an instinct thing. Yeah, 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 so it's not like... Don't say twins or anything, but... (laughs) um, Yeah, so then I've probably done about three or four tests as Mm -hmm. well um, before the time. Anyway, I phoned the clinic the next day and I said, I've done a pregnancy test yesterday, so... Well, there you go. It's worked. Congratulations. They said there's no point in coming back for the blood test yeah. if you've done three or four pregnancy tests yeah. because that was another 150 quid mm. or whatever. You know, you've got the clear evidence there. So um, we'll cancel that appointment. And you can't tell or feel or listen to the heartbeat or anything mm. or, uh, for about seven weeks. Mm-hmm. Till seven weeks later mm. is when they done a scan on my yeah. tummy and confirmed it at the clinic. Yeah. Um, and said it was twins. That was twins. 
um, that's where my mum just broke down. Are you sure? Are you sure? I can still see her face now. And I just <laughs> smiled. And I was just like, there you go. I told you. Um, yeah, so, so that was the start of my pregnancy. Wow. Yeah. And how was the pregnancy? Were, were Amazing. You, were you nervous thinking, oh, like... Were you, as in, I went, my body wasn't like, I weren't sort of like wrapped up in cotton wool and that. Mm. I was still, I was working mm. right up until us. Because the reason I'm asking, because you know, like, because it was, you had to go through so much. Yeah. And being told that you're infertile, paying so much money and all of that. Were you nervous at one point you might have a miscarriage? No. You know I, mean? I could see that, I could see these babies was in my arms. I could see oh. it. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I could. I just, you know, I was... I, I flew through pregnancy. I, I was just all belly, all, mm-hmm. you know, from behind like you. Do, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah. Fun. Okay, so then delivery. Talk about. Yeah. Fast forward, now you gave birth to them. Yeah. And uh, is that Alex, sorry? That's Alex, yeah. He's a very handsome man. Yeah, he was. Very alpha male of what you've been talking about a lot lately <laughs> as well, going back to your. Um, and I suppose I'm an yeah. alpha female as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then um, how was the delivery like? The uh, well, the pregnancy was amazing. Mm. Sailed through it. Um, got bigger and bigger and bigger. I loved my bump. Loved mm. it. Just reminiscing on that as well. Missed it, actually. Did you have a baby shower? Yeah, I had a baby shower. Yeah, cause you, cause you said something about it. Because at the time, baby shower weren't as common back then. No, yeah. no. So, But, but I, I hired out this big... Uh, bar kind of thing. I think I had about fifty-five people and come. You should because it's a yeah. big thing. This one, especially. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's amazing. Everyone was so happy for me. Mm. You know, everyone knew what we'd been through, what we'd gone through. Yeah. You know what I'd gone through. Um, you know, and how desperately I wanted these. Honestly, mm. I, there was so much love around. You just yeah. wouldn't believe it. And obviously, all the presents and gifts and vouchers and everything helped out as well, <laughs> being a single mum. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was amazing at the, um, at the baby shower. And then I, I didn't want to opt for a cesarean. Everyone, mm. oh, you got, you know, I wanted to go through natural, natural birth. Yeah. You know, so, so you had them natural? No, I didn't okay. in the end. I had a cesarean. Mm. But um, on the, we, we booked in. 38 weeks to the day, because mm-hmm. 39, no, 39 weeks, 38 weeks, I think, when you're pregnant with twins, mm-hmm. 30, 40 weeks when you're pregnant normally. Wow. Mm-hmm. Um, so we booked in for me to go in. I said, if nothing starts, you know, um, before this time, we'll go and we'll start you off. So I went into Barnet Hospital with my bag, and they give you these kind of tablets to try and make you, to start you off. To, mm. So I was two centimetres dilated um, on day three. So they took me down. It's going to be today. You know, it's going to be today. Um, so they took me down to the delivery suite. And then I don't know. I don't know if it was because you have two bands on when mm-hmm. it's got twins. Monitoring, mon- monitoring two heartbeats. I don't know if the one band had slipped down or anyway, they could hear one heartbeat was a bit faint. Mm. I had eight doctors in within... Eight doctors. Yeah, eight doctors oh. in discussing it. Right, no, like, right, let's get her in for cesarean. And when it's twins, you know, they, one's breach, one's not. They, mm. Because, anyway, they gave me an epidural because you have to, anyway, because in case they have to pull the other one out, if, mm. if not, anyway, so. Yeah. So then it was a decision whether my sister or my mum come in because you're only allowed one, mm. whereas they both would have been in if I would have gave birth naturally. So yeah. my sister ended up coming in, which was brilliant because my mum would have been... <laughs> As I've explained before, <laughs> what she was like, probably yeah. like. Um, she probably make you more nervous, wouldn't yeah, she? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but my sister, she's the one that took the picture. She brought her phone in, she took the picture, and she was amazing. She held my hand. Aww. That was literally when they got placed into my, into my arms, you know. Yeah. Um, Tell yeah. Me, talk about the names. Yeah, Hope and Faith, yeah. But you oh, during when I was pregnant. Yeah. Uh, they was always going to be Grace and Eva. Okay. Because um, I love the name Grace, I love the name Eva. I remember Alex saying, what, what do them names mean? Yeah. You know, there's no, why, why them names? What do they mean? You yeah. know, you want to say, well, yeah, you're right. What's it like? Yeah. I mean, he didn't actually pick the names, but he made me think like, you know, you need yeah. meaningful Meaning, names. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I was lying there one day and I thought, hope and faith. Mm. Come running downstairs, said to my mum, I've got the girls' names. Because we found out what sex they was as well. Yeah. Alex actually come to a, a scan with me and mm. uh, and we found out what's it. So he was quite yeah. involved in within yeah. the pregnancy and the, and the everything. Yeah. He just got scared, I suppose, yeah. when they come up and yeah. run. 
Uh, from now after, yeah. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> so then, um, uh, talk about the names because then after they were born, you gave them names. But then what happened with the names? Yeah, talk about that. Yeah, so I always know. Everyone's like, "Well, how are you going to choose who's hope and who's yeah. faith?" I said, "Well, because I always say hope and faith. Yeah. If you say faith and hope, it sounds a bit yeah. backwards to me." <laughs> I've, so I was like, "Hope will come out first. So it'll be hope and faith." And that's why it was. So that on the on the um, it's twin two. one, yeah. twin two. Yeah. So they was like, right, hope and faith. And as you can see, one's got blonde hair, mm-hmm. lighter, one's darker. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, and it, in my eyes, hope is kind of a weaker name than faith. Faith is a stronger name. Yeah. I don't want to use the word weak because yeah. none of them are certainly not weak. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I don't but, mean yeah. Um, yeah, so I, was, I phoned up my mum and said, no, 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 I'm going to change them. I'm going to change them. Faith's going to be the dark head one. Yeah. Hope's going to be mum's. You can't do that, old Claire. You can't do that. I said, I can. My kids. <laughs> I can do whatever I want. Yeah. How many days after was this? Uh, it was the next day. Okay, so I okay. spent the day, yeah. I spent the night with them. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'd had a caesarean by yeah. this time. So I was in a lot, like, a lot of pain, mm. you know, and couldn't sort of pick them up yeah. and feed them. Oh, Breastfed them straight away. Yeah. Like when they placed them into my hands and it was feeding time, they latched on both. I, I breastfed them for the first two years, yeah. both of them. Yeah. I used to sleep like that with them <laughs> propped up, like, you know, and that's uh, that's one thing I'm proud of as so well. So Hope is the one with the light, with the Yeah, like and she was always yeah. the smallest. Okay. It was good weight, 6'1 and 5'13. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so she's always the smallest. She's the blonde one. Faith is the sh- more dominant one, mm-hmm. uh, the dark haired one. And yes, yeah, so I changed their names around, and now they are Hope and Faith, oh. famous McGlynn twins. <laughs> Every they kind of everyone says to me, "What are you going to tell them when they get old?" They know, yeah. they know they've been in the magazines. They know that mm. Mummy was so desperate for you. You know, yeah. I went into a clinic and ex- explained the ins and outs. But yeah. you know, that I'm kind of out there on the web. I yeah. want them to know, like <laughs> you know, the, um, where they come from, their yeah. background, and they can be in strong, independent women. Yeah. And have you met? The sperm donor? No. Okay. No, and it's not. It's they. The clinic holds the details because it's not anonymous in this country. Right. Okay. So if they're eighteen, they want to know who the donor is. Yeah. Then they, they, they can. can go. Okay. Has Alex met them? Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he met them. Um, brought them loads of clothes and Aww, big bags of clothes. Nice. We met in a cafe actually. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh, and he's seen them since. We've been mm. over to Cyprus since. And oh, so like basically you're still in touch and your friends. Yeah, kind course. of not anymore because he's yeah. he's married now. Okay. He's gone off and get married mm. and hope he's happy and yeah. in whatever he's doing in his life. But yeah, he's um, we're not we're not kind of in touch anymore. Mm. We are, uh, but yeah, he was. They know who he is. Yeah. They know his mummy's ex boyfriend, mm. and we were trying for yeah. for children and. You know, there's yeah. there's no bad feeling there yeah. at all. I've got my dream in the yeah, end. Exactly, I was about you know? to say, yeah. yeah. So, to wrap up, what worst do you have for women out there? Don't leave it too long. Don't f- just take it for granted that you're you're you know that you're going to be all right. You're going to conceive and all that. It's the 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 age is getting younger and younger mm-hmm. because I hear it out there. I mean, I did buy the the domain name isupportfertility.com. Oh, you did? Yeah, uh-huh. and I wanted, because for that for that story out there, I wanted anyone that's got any um, questions, mm. any support they need, where my clinic is at, you know, the juice of tree mm. or any, you know, any support or anything, mm-hmm. then get in contact with me, you know. Yeah. I'll give you any advice that I can or yeah. any help that you need, you know. It might not be much, but even just that, like that, that Lady Jane who I yeah. met, you know, she went to my clinic and... You know, I don't know if if that um, I don't know if that's still live that I support because that story, the headline, just took it in another sort of dimension. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I didn't. But the egg collection scheme is very important. Yeah. You know, if you think if you've been told you can't have kids or you think you can't have kids, you know, uh, go get in contact with the egg sharing team because mm. if you're 35 and under, you can donate your eggs to other women to help other yeah. women. And you will get your treatment free because mm, they're amazing. crying out for them. That's amazing, actually. Yeah. So, like, there's still hope. Yeah. But also, I want to say is that it's, it can be quite scary because to hear that, oh, my God, like, my body clock, you know, yeah. Body, yeah. Body, body clock, you know biological clock yeah. is ticking away. But at the same time, I want to say that don't be discouraged. Like, ladies, don't be discouraged because a lot of times, like I said earlier, the power of knowing and yeah. believing and just... 
visualizing visualizing yeah and things like that and also i think we, we don't get taught this is it's looking after your womb yeah you know do all of that definitely yeah look eating healthy yeah you know and also like doing yoni steam things like that looking after taking care of you can actually heal your womb yeah. um and a lot of times you know we, we probably think oh yeah but my f-, like you said uh your mum had um Early, early menopause. menopause yeah but and then we and then we get instilled this story thinking yeah. that it's gonna affect us mm. and i'm the kind of person i don't like that to become my reality so i refuse yeah. to believe that would be me yeah. so then i will re- rewire myself which is basically refuse to believe that and actually i believe yeah i can still have babies yeah regardless of like age obviously i'm not saying like oh about 50 i still have baby but yeah 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 i'm not gonna let that story that my mum's my mother's reality yeah to become my reality yeah that makes sense yeah everyone is different still but yeah it's uh yeah if you've got a dream go out there get it what's your instagram uh claire mcglynn 1977 yeah thank you for coming on no thank you for having me <laughs> honestly it's it's been a real pleasure i follow you i see you in the gym you're an amazing pilates teacher by the way um <laughs> yeah so you you're great and just keep sort of inspiring other women oh, yourself you. and i hope that i have as well today so yeah, I'm sure you definitely have yeah because not, not, many, not many people talk about this you know no exactly yeah. Yeah, and I'm so happy and grateful that you using that you want to come on my show yeah. to share this, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. So you know. Yeah, that is it. Thank you, Celia Thank Lee, you. the next opera win free. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for watching and listening. And please show us love. Share this if you if you found it useful or you think anyone can benefit from this, please share it. And also please hit the subscribe button and like this. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.